Good evening. God bless you now. We're so glad to be with you again on this Wednesday evening for another journey through the Bible. I want you to, again, as we often say, call a friend, call a, a loved one, family member, and tell them, come on, let's get ready to go into the Word of God because in His Word is life and life evermore. So yes, we know we may be fa facing trials and tribulation, hardships and different things in our life for things going on surrounding us, but it's when we can escape and go into the scripture, go into the word of God, that we can find peace, joy, and happiness. Well, God bless you now. We want to bow our heads and let's get ready to, to go into the word. Lord God, we honor you. We thank you now. We bless you for another opportunity to be a blessing to your people. We ask you, Lord God, to touch the hearers, Lord God, and those that have sacrificed their time to be a part of this uh, journey through the Bible. But most of all, Lord God, we pray that lives be changed, that souls be saved, and that people, Lord God, will come to you according to your word, Lord God. Let this be a blessing and let this be life and let this be bread, Lord, to the eater and seed to the sower. And we'll forever give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. We thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. We're going to be going into a passage of scripture here, uh, again, that may be familiar to some. Uh, for others, it may not be, but it's uh, Romans chapter 12. We're looking at the 12th chapter of the book of Romans here. And uh, we, we're going to just be looking at a couple of verses here. But there is a lot that uh, the Lord is, is saying to us. And so we want to be sensitive to the word. And we want to make sure that we give the most earnest heed to the word of God and to what God is saying to us here. Romans chapter 12, and I'm going to start at verse 1 here, and the Bible reads, I beseech thee, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Uh, we see here Apostle Paul is making a plea. He's making a, a cry. Uh, he's uh, uh, begging and asking a question of the church. And uh, he's simply saying uh, that by the mercies of God, by God's goodness, by God's grace and his mercy. Uh, and we, we know we've talked about in other Bible studies about the grace of God and how we look at God's unmerited favor, sometimes even taking it for granted, which we shouldn't do. But nevertheless, uh, sometimes we do fall victim of taking God's grace for granted. But Apostle Paul is saying to us here, by the mercies of God, understanding that God uh, didn't have to be merciful, but because he is so merciful, because he gave us his only begotten son, and because his son gave his life, it extended unmerited favor. It is extended grace and mercy to us. And so uh, Paul is saying, since we have this mercy, uh, uh, let us show our thankfulness. Let us show our appreciation to, to God for what it is God has done for us. And he's saying, I, I beseech you, I urge you, 
uh, uh, I beg of you, uh, by the mercies of God, that you present. In other words, it shouldn't be a hardship on us. It shouldn't be that it's something that is being done out of a stress or out of anxiety. No, it should be that we present just like Jesus presented himself for our sins as a propitiation, a sacrifice for our sin. Then so should it be that we as believers, after we learn and after we know of the goodness of God and how Christ paid such a dear price after he was beaten and 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 and, and stretched wide and hung high for the whole world to see it. <clears throat> he and, uh, um, endured the cross and despised the shame all for us. Now, seeing that and knowing that, Paul said, I'm I'm begging you and I'm I'm urging you by the mercies of God, because we know that God said his mercy won't always strive with man. We don't know when the, the, the time is coming. We, we can see with the signs of the time and with this uh, uh, scourge and, and this disease and, and virus that's wreaking havoc over our land, something that's never happened before, Time is not as long as it once has been. So it is our responsibility, uh, sisters and brothers, to take the time that we have left. As Apostle Paul is saying to us, that we present our bodies, that we make the sacrifice, that we present our bodies a living sacrifice. Now we have to understand we, we've seen in the Bible where most sacrifices uh, were, were uh, killed and laid over the altar for burnt offering. But because Jesus has already paid the ultimate price for us by dying for our sins, now let us as his representatives here on the earth, let us as true believers present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Other words, our bodies should be a representative of Christ's body, but not in the fact that we have to physically die, but yes, that we die to our flesh that we die to those passions, to those desires, to those uh, 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 nuances that uh, would pull us away from uh, living for him. So this is what Apostle Paul is imploring the believer, that we should present our bodies as a living sacrifice, living in the sense that physically we are alive, but sacrifice in that we make a conscious decision in our mind and in our heart that we will not associate with those things that are of the world, that we will not associate with the, the lying, with the cheating, with the backbiting, with the immorality of the world but rather we would commit our hearts and our lives and our minds to living a life that is holy, hallelujah, holy and acceptable unto God. Now, here it is, we understand that holy and, and acceptable, that, that means it's, it's sanctified and set aside a life that, uh, it is different that, that people can understand and recognize it is different. It's not uh, the same as everybody else. When you live a holy life, you should uh, have a difference, amen, in the way that you act, the way that you think, the way that you talk, the things that you do. It should be a difference. It shouldn't be that, you know, a person can be around you and, 
uh, they can't tell that it's something different about your life. That's right. Your life should stand out. The Bible declares that uh, who uh, lighteth a candle and put it on a bushel. No, your, your life should be a light so that it's, it's set on a hill and it cannot be hid. In other words, God is imploring us as Christians and as believers, once we uh, are partakers of his spirit, that we let our light show, so shine that men may see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. That is what uh, a true believer uh, should always look to do, is to uh, allow his life or her life to be an example to somebody that's living in a world of sin that there is a higher standard. There is a better way. And it's not that I can take credit for doing it on my own, but in Christ Jesus, I have the power. In Christ Jesus, I can do all things. There is truly nothing impossible to the believer. And so this is the reason why uh, yes, uh, that we have to make sure that we represent the, the God that we serve. Uh, our life should automatically be an example or a template for the world to see how good God is. And so this is here where Apostle Paul is saying to us uh, that we present our body uh, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Amen. Holy and acceptable unto God. And, and listen here, he says, this is our reasonable service. In other words, it's not that God is asking you to do something that's irrational. It's not that God is asking you to do something that's impossible to do. No, this is the reasonable thing for us to do, considering what all has been done for us. Yes, a lot of times we want to go out and do and act and say and uh, 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 be any kind of way that we want to be, but uh, we, we, we still want to, on Sunday, come around and act like we, you know, got it all together and everything else. And that's just not representative of the God that we serve. We should want to. We should be looking forward to live a life that God is pleased with. Amen. A life, as the word of God says here, that's holy and acceptable unto God. You know God ain't acceptable of you going out and uh, um, making an open face shame of him and you 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 uh, going into uh, places that God wouldn't want to be into clubs and into nightlife and and, and things that uh, 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 God wouldn't want to be involved in uh, immor immorality and debauchery and all those things and places that the world takes pleasure in takes glory in we know that that's not acceptable unto God. So we want to uh, make sure that we live our life in a way that's pleasing unto God, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable. I like the way Apostle Paul put that. Our reasonable service. In other words, this is not no great uh, uh, feat. This is not something that's impossible for you to do. Now, yes, in the flesh, <laughs> we know our flesh, it doesn't want to do right. Amen. Our flesh doesn't want to act right. Our flesh, if somebody uh, uh, does something to us, wants to uh, strike back and our flesh wants to get revenge and our flesh wants to uh, uh, take strike for strike. But God said, no, I want you to live a life that's holy and acceptable and wherein I want you to recognize that in my word, I say vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I don't need you to try to 
go tit for tat with nobody. I want you to sit back and know that I am God. Yes, I want you to let the Lord fight your battles for you. Not that you have to go out because that's what the world do. The world go out and, you know, pay strike for strike, tip for tap. But when you really have a higher power, when you really have something on the inside of you, a power that supersedes the flesh, then you can take something being mistreated, being talked about, being misused, and you can still hold your integrity to say, I'm not going to do to you what you did to me, but I'm going to, you know, sit back and see the salvation of the Lord. I'm going to stand still and know that he is God and he would not let anything by any means harm me, but in all things, he will protect and keep and cover me because I am his child. Hallelujah. And that's true power. That's true power to know that we are on a whole different level above the fray of this world, things that's going on in this world that we sometimes truly, we don't have any control over. But what we do have control over is our own reactions. What do we do with our body? What are we going to do with our uh, uh, temple? Uh, and that's what we're going to be held accountable for. Not by what somebody does to us, but what is our response? And we should respond in a way that God will get the glory, that God will be pleased with our life. Let's see here in, in verse number two, it says, and be not conformed, oh glory to God. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Oh, that's a whole lot right there. Uh, that's putting a, a whole blunt of responsibility not on us, but it's saying that we have to uh, have the power that lives within us through Christ Jesus. So God knew that this was going to be something that was really literally impossible for us to do if we tried to do it in our own power. See, in, in our own power, we, 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 we're going we're gonna to fail with this. This is no, no way that a human can do this in their own power. But the only way that we can do this is that we have to commit our ways unto Christ. We have to allow Christ, we have to allow the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit rise up in us and live through us in order to accomplish this. And that's the reason why uh, the Bible says here, that we are not to conform to this world. Because, see, when you are conformist, that means you're walking directly in your flesh. That's right, because that's all the world is. The world is, a, is a, a, a catering to and promoting the things of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the lust of the uh, flesh, and the pride of life. That's all the world has to offer you. And uh, uh, those are the things that we have to be careful about because if we fall into the being conformed, that's what we're going to conform to, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Those are the things that the world has to offer, and that's how we conform because we get caught up in the lust of our eye, what it is we see, or our flesh, those immoral acts. Amen, that we, 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 we uh, get drawn off into. And then the pride of life, our ego. Yeah, some folks, that's what they're all about. They don't have a whole lot of problems with, you know, uh, 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 being fleshly, so to speak. But their ego, they, they, they're very egotistical. They want all the credit. They want all the shine. And we know that the way of Christ is a way of humility. Amen? Yes, we have to understand 
That that's where the transformation comes in. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's right. The only way that we can really truly be Christians and, and be representatives of Christ is there has to be a change in the way that you think. There has to be a change in your mindset. There's no way that you can accomplish what God is asking you to accomplish or God is telling us here to do if we keep the same old fleshly mind. And that's where the, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost comes in to help us is it gives us the power to think right. It gives us the power to, to have the, the right train of thought and the right perceptions and the right uh, 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 understanding of what it is that God is saying because uh, people that look at a word like this in the flesh, they say, well, hey, I, I can't do that. that. That's just asking too much. That, I mean, what, how, what in the world? How am I going to, you know, talk about being transformed? I, uh -uh, I've been had this mind all my life. I'm you know, uh, 35, 45, 55 years old. I, I can't have somebody a transform. No, I'm too old to be trying to change. Uh-uh, I got the mind that I had, and I got this mind because I learned how not to let folks hurt me. I learned how not to let folks walk over me and, and, and misuse me. I ain't finna be changing my mind for what? Uh-uh, no. I got like this for a reason, and I'm going to keep this mind, and, and that's exactly what you're going to do. <laughs> you're going to keep that same flesh and mind if you continue to be conformed to the world. But all the while, God is saying for you, uh, sister, uh, brother, uh, it's time to change. It, it, it's time to, to transform. And, and, and a lot of times, we, we don't really want to recognize it, but it's when we go through times like this where we have to shelter in place and we have to be sequestered and we have to be quarantined. But God is using that time as an opportunity to bring about transformation. Yeah, we want to look at transformation and what we want God to do outside. We want things around us to change. We want this thing to get better, that thing to get better. And the whole while, God said, no, <laughs> the biggest transformation and the biggest change is in you. I am trying to work a work in you. When I shut things down, when I, you know, cut things off at the job and I cut things off with your friends and I cut things off with, you know, this person, that person, this thing and that thing, God said, I'm zeroing in on you. To under, get you to understand that I am calling for change. I am wanting you to have a change of heart and a change of mind because that is really the only way that you're going to be able to know me is that you have to have a transformed mind. God said, you, 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 you've been walking in the outer courts for too long. But now I'm calling you in to the inner courts. I want a, a higher and a deeper relationship. But the only way you're gonna experience that is you're gonna have to go beyond what you've been doing. The same old, same old is not gonna get it. I'm calling you to a higher dimension, to a deeper place of relationship and intimacy with me. And that is to be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable. Oh, yes. This is the will of God concerning you. That you be holy. That you be righteous. Yes, God's grace is sufficient. But the grace of God is not taking the place of the Holy Ghost. The grace of God is not taking the place of you presenting your body as a living sacrifice. See, 
That's what we have to recognize. We cannot use grace to give an occasion for our flesh. That's right. <laughs> I said, I said, you cannot use grace because you say, oh, well, God's grace is sufficient. God's grace go no, that's not how that works. See, you got to understand that God still wouldn't have put it in the word if he didn't still have a requirement. God is still requiring holiness. God is still requiring that you live a life that is holy and acceptable unto him. This is his will concerning you. Yeah, it should be that, you know, we want to, and we have a passion and a desire to live a life that is holy and acceptable unto God, not out of pressure, not out of coercion, but because we present, hallelujah, we present, we do it out of a willing heart. We present our bodies as a living sacrifice, something that we do on our own accord because when it came down to Jesus giving his life for us, nobody made him do it. He prayed a prayer one time and he said, Lord, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Then at the very same time, he said, nevertheless, I don't want to be caught up in my flesh. I don't want to sacrifice the flesh for what's greater, the opportunity that's set before me. Nevertheless, not my will, thy will be done. This is what Jesus said. And when will we, believer, come to that nevertheless? Every believer, every saint of God, everyone that names the name of Christ has to come to a point where they say, nevertheless, nevertheless, I won't take the less. I won't take my will. I won't take my fleshly desires. I won't take what the world has to offer me for what Christ has set before me. And that is a life of eternity, a life of eternal joy, peace, and happiness. And that is where God gets the pleasure out of our life because he sees that we have had a renewed mind. And in our mind, we recognize that all oh, the joy of what is set before us, the joy of knowing Christ, the, the joy of being in a perfect relationship where we know that he has already given his all for us. And now he just asks us to give our life as a living sacrifice. Let our light so shine so that men and women will see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. God bless you now. Just a couple of verses here in Romans 12. I want you to understand and know that Jesus loves you, and so do we. And it's at this time of uh, pandemic and the suffering that we may be experiencing on uh, some of our uh, in some of our lives from. Uh, financial struggles and uh, being sheltered in and things of that nature. Uh, but still, be encouraged. Uh, uh, look up to God. Give thanks to God. Don't, don't uh, allow this situation to depress you or to oppress you. Recognize that God is still in control and that he is still working things out. We may not see it and we may not understand it all, but just know that God said to us that he would never leave us, neither would he forsake us. So just understand that this is still our year. This is still our time. The manifestation is still here. It's coming in ways that we could have never imagined, but God is still manifesting his love, his kindness and his, kindness and his is, is peace and joy in our lives because uh, we, we see how his hand of protection and providence is still over us. God bless you. It may be somebody that does not know Christ in the pardoning of their sin. We want to give you this opportunity now to know who Jesus is. 
And again, as I lead you to Christ, it's very simple that you say this simple prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I love you, I honor you, and I praise you. I thank you now for being the lover of my soul. And I believe that you died, but you rose again. And because you rose, I can rise. Forgive me of all my sins, all my transgressions and iniquities. And be now the Lord of my life. Fill me with your spirit. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. And I will live for you for the rest of my life. Now, all you got to do is just believe that. Commit your, your heart, your mind, and your ways to Christ. And you are a new creature in Jesus. Well, God bless you now. We want you to continue to walk in relationship with him. And when time comes, we are looking to fellowship back with you. You can connect with us over the internet, online, drop us a line, give us your information so we can stay in contact with you. Want you to be a part of this great ministry and what God is doing here in deliverance. And we want you to recognize that God loves you so much. And all of our first responders, we want you to know that we're forever praying for you. Thank you for your sacrifice. All of our doctors and nurses, all of our uh, military workers, our, our policemen, the, the coroners, those that are working in the trenches on the front line, want you to know that God loves you. And so do we. We are praying for you and want you to know that God is going to keep you covered. Uh, now, we want you to remember that we're going to be here continually uh, and also on our prayer line every Thursday night at 7 o'clock p.m. I want you to join us as well on Sunday at uh, 7 o'clock a.m. on your ABC station. Also, we'll be live on uh, Facebook Live at 1045 a.m. Uh, again, for another powerful word from the Lord. Yours truly, Apostle Well was here encouraging you now to starve your fears and feed your faith. God bless you. We love you. Until next time. Thank you for joining us for Bible study. If you have any questions or comments about the lesson, we'd love to hear from you. Email us at efvm4460 at gmail.com. Send us a DM or post your question in the comments section below. We look forward to hearing from you. Greetings, everybody. My name is Pastor A, and I pastor at Christ Delivers Temple, Columbus, Georgia. We are here as part of Evangelical Faith Vision Ministries. We are so excited about what God is doing in this ministry. We want to challenge you to sow because this place is fertile ground. We know that God has given a seed to you, and you want to plant it in this ground. You want to be a part of what God is doing here. God has given us manifold testimonies of miracles, signs, and wonders, and you want to be a part of it. We want to challenge you to name your seed, claim what God is doing. I I speak in declaring the decree that God is getting ready to give a supernatural increase just because of your seed. So we want you to click the link at the bottom. There's a link down there. Givelify. Give on Givelify. You can give on PayPal. You can send us an old-fashioned check. But whatever it is, we want you to be a part of this. Get in on this soil. The time is now. Don't wait. We declare in the creed that we'll never be broke another day in our life because we got a seed in our hand. We talk to our money at Evangelical Faith Vision Ministry. We say, seed, go, grow, and return. Seed, go, grow, and return. Seed, go, grow. Get the overflow and bring it on back. You need to be a part of it. So, 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 so. God bless.